All right, so Trent, we're going to look at an interesting substance today, one of my favorite substances to work with, and it's called dry ice. Have you seen dry ice before, ever used any? No. Okay. Just regular ice. Just regular. That's what most people know. You go to the freezer, you get some ice. And that ice is made out of water. Water gets cold, below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it freezes and turns into ice. And with that same water, if I set a cube of ice out here on the table, as it got warmer, what would happen to that ice? It would evaporate. Well, or before, turn into a liquid. Okay, before it evaporated, it would turn to a liquid, and then that liquid, if we left it sitting for a while, it would evaporate. But dry ice is interesting because it kind of skips the turn to a liquid part. It's actually turning from a solid directly into a gas. And that process in chemistry is known as sublimation, just changing straight from a liquid to a gas. You see kind of some vapor coming off. You can actually kind of run your hand through it and move it around the tabletop. That's carbon dioxide gas because all a piece of dry ice is is a frozen piece of carbon dioxide. And we want to put gloves on when we handle it because it's very cold. It's about 110 degrees below zero. Wow. So definitely cold enough to freeze your hands if you let it. These gloves are insulated enough we can actually pick it up and play with it a little bit. But we can just take a piece of dry ice here and you can see as I move it around even more that carbon dioxide vapor coming off of it. I'll just give you some pieces. I'll let you just drop them in our flask there and you're going to start seeing it's going to look like it's smoking but it's really not smoke. It's just that Carbon dioxide gas coming out. You can go ahead and drop them in there. It feels like regular ice with this um, with these gloves on. Well, it does. It's you know, it's just a solid, you know, cold yeah. object, much like a regular piece of ice. Just much, much colder. You can just drop them all in there. Looks like it's like a volcano overflowing with smoke. <laughs> volcano of smoke. Except again, you know, not not really smoke, but carbon dioxide. And I'm just going to, what we want to do, we want to actually catch some of that though. I'm going to pull my gloves back off now so I can handle this balloon. But we're going to catch some of that carbon dioxide. Because the interesting thing about carbon dioxide, you know, if we set something on fire, the smoke kind of goes up in the air, right? But you notice this is staying along the table and even kind of going off the edge down to the floor. Because carbon dioxide is heavier than the air in the room, which is mostly made up of nitrogen. But we're going to catch a balloon full of this, and we're just going to kind of compare it to a balloon that I blew up a few minutes ago. All right, so let's just take this off of here now. And what I want you to do is hold that up as high as you can over the counter. And we're just going to drop them and just watch on the count of three. One, two, three. How much slower the carbon dioxide, or rather how much faster the carbon dioxide balloon falls, how much slower the regular balloon falls, just because of the different density. And you can kind of see with that if you take it and throw it up in the air, you know, Everybody's hit a balloon around before trade when they try this one. It almost feels more of like a ball falling down, back down at you. Throw it up, it comes back down fairly quickly. Wow. That's really fast falling down. I know, almost it's hard, hard to keep the balloon bouncing when you got it full of carbon dioxide gas. All right, well now let's move this out of the way. Because the neat thing about dry ice, because it's really cold, we can actually do some really neat things to other substances with the dry ice. Like freezing them up? We can freeze some things with it. Yeah, yeah. And what I'm going to do now, in order to, you know, we can put this in the water. It is going to cool the water down. But once again, if we cool water below 32 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, what happens to it? It's going to oh, freeze, it's right? Gonna freeze. Yeah, turn back into ice. So we need something that has a much lower freezing point. And for that, we're going to use a chemical called acetone. And I've actually got a bottle of it over here that we're going to use um, just so that we'll be sure to have enough. Because we're going to pour some acetone into our beaker. But we're just going to put some dry ice in here. And it's going to, you're going to see it bubbling, us, especially at first, you're going to see it bubbling a lot. Probably have some bubbling out on the table and that'll be okay. Uh, the more that this cools off, the less bubbling we'll see. And once it stops bubbling a lot like this when we drop in dry ice, we know that it's got down to a cooler temperature. Looks like the dry ice is about to go away. And it is. It's, it's actually changing it back into a gas very quickly. We're going to keep dropping some in so that we can keep it cooling. And as it cools, it's going to start bubbling less and less. I've got a little thermometer here. We can actually stick this down in here just to kind of get a reading on our temperature as well as we're dropping more in. Is this like the only thing that can burn dry ice? 
Well, it's not burning. It's just because the temperature of this, even though, you know, this bottle of acetone, it's at room temperature. It's probably seven, 70 degrees. That would be about the same as you sticking your hand into some 200 degree water. That's just, even though it's not really boiling compared to the temperature of the dry ice, it's, it's like a boiling pot to a normal ice cube. So we're just going to have to keep adding until it drops the temperature enough. And if we look at this now, this is a Celsius thermometer. We're actually down to about 20 degrees below zero. So it's very cold now. You can see it's starting to even turn, get some ice collecting on the outside of the beaker because even the moisture in the air around it's beginning to condense on the vapor or condense on the beaker rather and freeze. But we're going to keep lowering the temperature of it. Can you get some in? Yeah, go for it. Wait, let, let it bubble down a little bit. And once the bubbling kind of stops, you can go ahead and drop that piece in. So what I want to do now, we're just going to try putting just some everyday objects in the dry ice. And right here I've got a pencil eraser, and I'll let you hold this down in there. Now here's some beaker tongs. Just kind of hold on to it. And you want to hold that down into the, into the acetone. And maybe hold it all, all the way down in there for maybe about 10 seconds. Now erasers, we know they're nice, soft, you know, you can throw it, it'll bounce, right? Made out of rubber. So take that out, sit it on the counter, and we're just going to give it a whack with a hammer here. And just watch what happens. Dang. Breaks like plastic. some kind of hard plastic, right? So even something like rubber, we're able to freeze when we get it to a low enough temperature. All right, now we've got a couple other objects here, and I'm just going to let you take right here. We've got a leaf. I just picked it off the tree outside, and I want you to just grab it by the stem there. Yeah. Let's get it real good. This might be better to kind of get it like that, and just hold that down in there until I tell you to take it out. I'm going to hit it with another pair of beaker tongs when we get it out. Okay, go ahead and pull it out of there for me, and we're just going to take it and hold it up, hold it up. Actually, drop, set it down in there for just a minute. When you pull it out, hold it up kind of over the beaker there. And I'm just going to smack it with this pair of tongs. All right, shake it off a little bit. And so you can see we can take a leaf, and because just the moisture in that leaf and that cold temperature, it freezes. And we're able to, you know, take a normally soft object, put it to a very cold liquid, freeze it, and bring it out and break it like glass. All right, now, next thing I want to do, I've got a racquetball here. Y'all use these, I know, outside when you play wall ball and stuff. Yeah. And you can take it, it'll bounce. I can bounce it on the floor, bounce is high. But I'm just going to let you get that with the tongs there. Just open them all the way. There we go, got to kind of push them in, they'll close it down. All right, and what I want you to do, now it's going to want to float up because it's full of air, but I want you to take that and just hold it down into the acetone for just a minute. Now this one's a bigger object. It's got a lot of air in it that we need to cool off. So we're going to want to hold it in there maybe 20 seconds or so. Give it time to, for most of the bubbles to stop. Because again, once it stops bubbling, you know that it's kind of normalized the temperature in there and you've reached that point of equilibrium with the, with the dry ice, the acetone, and the object that you've added. Because it's so cold, it actually, you know, it turns the rubber much harder and it even compresses the air inside the racquetball. So it just loses that bounce that it had before. There's lots of built up ice on the outside now. Yep, more and more of that condensation building up. But you can see now when we throw it down, it's even it doesn't small. even want to bounce and it feels hard, hard to squeeze. So we've actually frozen a racquetball. All right, so one last thing we're going to freeze here. I've got an apple. And what I want you to do, I'll let you put this in. Just be careful, don't drop it in too much and splash everywhere, but just see if you can grab that with those beaker tongs and just hold it down close to the liquid and just very gently release that in there. It's probably going to bubble a lot. Oh, wow. Yep, making a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. I messed up. 
Probably. Well, it's just it's because, again, that apple is so much hotter than the liquid we're putting in, it almost makes this explosion of carbon dioxide gas coming out because it's, you know, again, it's just such a big difference in temperature that that acetone has to bubble up and it's, it's inevitable it's going to come out of there. We're going to let that sit for two or three minutes. We're going to come back to it, pull it out, and take a look at our frozen apple. And I'm just going to kind of take another pair of tongs here. And you can kind of hear when we hit it, it's very, very solid in there now. So we're going to take it out and we're going to set it on the table and let's just sort of see if its properties have changed a little bit. I'm, let me get this out of here just because okay. it's, it's very cold and it's kind of big and we want to make sure that we don't really touch it too much. But we're just going to take it over the table and I'll let you just kind of back up just a little bit. So Apple's definitely changed a lot, right? So what we're going to do, I'm going to try, I'm going to put it in there for just a minute, let you get it, make sure it gets good and cold again. It crack. And this time, it, there is actually a crack in the apple now, but we're going to take it out next time. And instead of just dropping it a little bit, we're going to throw it against the table and we're going to see what happens. Okay. okay. And we're going to see if we can actually shatter this frozen apple. And I'll let you do it if you want to. You ready? Just hold it up. And I just want you to throw it against the table right there. Three, throw it, come, come over here with me and just straight down. Three. Two, one, go. And it blew across the floor. All right, so we collected our pieces. They kind of went flying there, but you can see we've got our frozen pieces of apple. They're starting to thaw out a little bit. But if we wanted to, we could drop them back in here, kind of refreeze it a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do, we're just going to let you give this a good solid hit with the hammer and let's just see if we can shatter the rest of that apple there. <laughs> 